In this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement a role-based access control using ASP.NET Core Identity. Role-based access control, or RBAC, is an authorization approach where we connect roles with permissions, and we only allow a user that has a given permission to execute some action. In our case, this will be calling an API endpoint. So let me show you how we're going to build this. So here's my sample application. It's a user management API that already has authentication implemented with JSON Web Tokens. And we also have role-based authorization using ASP.NET Core Identity roles. There are two actions or endpoints, one for registering a new user. And by default, we're going to assign a user to the member role when they register with our application. Then in the login user, we're going to check their credentials and return a JSON Web Token with a set of claims that we can use for performing authorization. So how do permissions fit into the current model without us having to write a bunch of additional code? Let me first start the application and then I'll connect to the database. From the Aspire dashboard, I can check out my database and I'm actually interested in the Postgres instance. And here I'm looking for the Postgres password so that I can connect to it from the Beaver or whatever tool you prefer for managing your database. So here's the ER diagram for the ASP.NET Core identity tables. And essentially we have a users table and a bunch of accompanying tables. Now, what am I going to use to implement role-based access control? Well, notice that the users already have a relationship to the roles table and the roles table can have a set of claims assigned to it. So we can basically use this structure to implement permissions where we're going to define the respective permissions for each role and then add that to the JSON web tokens so we can use it for authorization purposes. Using the existing tables is going to allow us to have to write the minimal amount of code but obviously if you want to make this more flexible you probably want to have a custom permissions table and then a relationship table to the ASP.NET roles. I won't be doing that since it's basically trivial and I'm sure you know how to implement this so let's focus on the more important stuff which is the authorization logic. It's important that you don't confuse authentication, which is who the current user is, with authorization, which basically determines what the authenticated user can do. So when we implement RBAC, we are actually concerned with authorization. And I'm going to start by defining a new type inside of the authorization folder, which I'm going to call permissions. So here I'm going to define my permissions as just a set of some constant strings. And let's say we have a permission like user read, and I want to construct them with a colon between. Now, because we're dealing with a group of resources, let's use users read. And then I'll have one more, which is going to be users update and let's say we want to add one more permission which is going to be users delete so this is what our permissions could look like you basically have all the freedom in this world to decide what structure you want to follow this is something simple that i've done in the past and it's worked really well so as i said the idea is to store these permissions as claims on the json web token i'm going to create a class that is going to contain my custom claim types. And here we just want one value, which is going to be the permission claim. So let's call it permission and I'll move this into its own file. So now that we have our permissions, we need to make sure that they are added to the respective roles when we add the role to the database. So if I scroll over here in the program file, I have some logic that's responsible for seeding the initial roles. Now, because this is going to become unwieldy, let's move it into an extension method. So I'll create a new class in the authorization folder. I'll call it extensions. And we're going to make this an extension on the web application type. I'll make it public, static, and async. Let's call this seed roles and permissions and let's make it an extension method on the web application so let me just grab the code that i already have here and move it into this method and i'm just going to grab this line here that's responsible for resolving the scope so now i'm going to call this using await app seed roles and permissions and while we're at it why don't we create another extensions class is going to contain a helper method for running database migrations so i'm just going to speed this up with some good old copy paste programming and of course i'll rename this method to to say apply migrations and we're going to take this code here and move it into our new helper method. Now let's also call it, and now I'm basically done with the program file. And here we want to have the code for applying migrations. Sure, let's call the async overload and let's close this down. Now here, we actually want to also add the claims to these specific roles. So because we don't have a role, so I'm going to slightly change the logic to first try to fetch the role from the database. So let's say 
role manager and then we're going to say find by name async and specify the name of the role so if the role is null we're going to add it to the database by calling create async and i just want to assign this when creating it and this will allow me to say role manager add claim and i can specify my admin role and then the claim i want to introduce so we're going to use our custom claim types to add the permission claim and then the value is going to be one of our permissions so let's say users read now let me adjust it slightly so that you can see everything on the screen so we're basically adding the claim to the specific role and i want to do this for all of my permissions so also users update and in case of the admin role i do want to have the users delete now let's do the same for the member role i'll add it as a variable we'll say await role manager find by name async specify roles member then i want to check if the member role is null then sure let's create it let's also assign the new identity role to the member role variable and i'm going to add the two claims right here for reading and updating the user i just need to update which role i'm using now obviously you can decide how you want to manage this this is just a quick and easy way for me to implement this i'm going to temporarily clear my database so that all of this gets seeded correctly when i start my application and now that we have our roles and permissions in place we have to make sure to return the permissions as a set of claims on the json web token we're going to take care of that in the login endpoint and right here we are setting our list of claims and I'm going to extract the permissions by writing a link query. So I'm going to have to write a join. So let's say from role in DB context, and I don't have my database context. So I'll need to inject it as another dependency. So let's add it here, application database context, and let's call it the DB context. So we want to query the roles table. We want to join to the claim, which is going to come from the DB context role claims. And we are performing this join on the role ID and matching it to the claim role ID column. Then we're going to apply some filters. So we want to check that the claim type is equal to our custom claim type which is called permission and then we also want to make sure that we are filtering our roles and i'm going to say that the roles array which i extracted above contains the role name so then we want to apply a projection i'll say select and let's select the claim value which should just give us the permission name i'll say distinct because we could have multiple roles with the same permission and then let's say to array async so if i check the type of the permission variable it's an array of strings this is exactly what i want and then i'll use the same idea as i did here to append this to my claims i'll say permissions select and for each permission i'll create a new claim where the claim type is permission and the claim value is just the permission itself so we can now test this out i'll start my application and i'll place a breakpoint here just to show you what's going to happen when we hit this so we're going to create a service scope resolve the role manager and try to fetch the admin role from the database now i did delete it beforehand so this is obviously going to be null and then we're going to create it and assign the respective roles we'll do the same for the member role as you can see here and i'll press continue and jump into the beaver and now if i refresh the roles table we have our two roles and if i refresh the role claims you can see that each each role is assigned the respective claims representing our permissions so let's go ahead and test out the login endpoint next since i don't have a user i'm going to register one you can see this succeeds and now i can authenticate using the same credentials and we get back this json web token let's inspect it to see what we have inside if i drop this into jwt io you can see the decoded payload here and then here is the permission claim containing the two permissions which is what we currently have in the member role so now that we have this as claims we can go ahead and implement it as a custom authorization requirement let me show you how you can do this so if you take a look at how we specify something like a role there's a method on the authorization policy builder that allows us to specify what is the required role for this authorization policy and in this case we are requiring the member role which is simply mapped to the respective claim for the currently authenticated user so i want to do something similar with permissions in the authorization folder i'll add a new class called the permission authorization requirement and we're going to do two things here first 
I'll make sure this implements I authorization requirement. This is just a marker interface. Now what's more important is implementing the authorization handler class, which allows us to specify this requirement. Now I just have to first specify the class and then the interface. So we implement the missing member, which is one method called handle requirement. Now what is the actual requirement? Well, we'll specify a property. Let's make it an array of strings. Let's say this is called the allowed permissions, and we'll be able to set this through the constructor. And I made a typo here it should be params string and then i can assign this to my property and then inside of the handle requirement async method we want to access the requirement instance and it's allowed permissions and iterate over them in a loop and then for each permission we want to check if it's present in the claims i'll create a boolean variable and access the authorization handler context, which gives me access to the claims principle. And here I can say find first, and I'm going to write a predicate to say that we want to find a claim where the claim type is equal to custom claim types permission and the claim value is equal to the permission that we have here. And then we want to say that this is a null. And in that case, we found the respective permission. So if we did, we want to say context succeed we have to pass in the requirement as the argument and we want to break outside of our for each loop finally here i can say return task complete the task and this completes my custom authorization handler now i also need an extension method to be able to easily apply this and i'll create a public static class let's call it permission extensions and inside we need an extension method let's make it public static void let's say require permission to match the similar naming convention that we already have. And we are extending the authorization policy builder. So let's say builder, and then we'll have an argument, let's say params, strings, and then allowed permissions. And inside we want to say builder, add requirements and initialize a new permission authorization requirement and pass in the permissions that we want to apply for this authorization policy. And finally, Going back to my endpoint, I can say require permission, and then we can specify the permission that we want to use. Let's say permissions users read, and then you are allowed to access this endpoint. So now if I go ahead and test this out, and I'll place a breakpoint here just to see how this works in action. So from Postman, let's grab a new access token, and I'll use it to send a request to the slash me endpoint. And you can see that we immediately hit the breakpoint in our custom authorization handler. The requirement is an instance of the permission authorization requirement, which is just this same class. And there is only one allowed permission, the user's read permission. So we're going to try to find this in the claims for the currently authenticated user. And we do manage to do this. So we're going to break outside of the loop and return a completed task. And essentially we're going to succeed this requirement. And this will allow us to invoke the endpoint and we'll get a response back in Postman. Now let's update the requirement to request the user's delete permission for whatever reason, even though this is a get endpoint. And I'm doing this because the current access token doesn't contain this permission. And in this case, we get back a 403 forbidden response. So this confirms that our custom authorization has Handler is working. And as you can see, this was incredibly simple to implement on top of ASP.NET Core identity. Now let me give you an idea of something else you can do. I'm going back to the ER diagram for the identity tables. And what we were using to implement role-based access control was the roles table and attaching our permissions as role claims. Now something else you can do is also attach user claims. And this basically allows you to add some custom permissions just to a given user. Let's say you don't want to attach some permission to all members of a particular role. You only want one specific user to have some permission. Instead of creating a new role and then adding a user to that role, you can circumvent this and just allow an option to add a custom permission through the user claims for a given user. This could be temporary. You can even extend this table to implement some exploration logic for or when this permission should no longer be available. I'm just giving you some ideas of what you can do on top of ASP.NET Core identity. Let me know in the comments what you think about this identity series and the couple of videos I did and what you would like to see next. If you missed the start, here is the first video covering how to implement ASP.NET Core identity from scratch. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.